The national chairman of the ruling All Progressives Congress, that's Abdullahi Ganduje, says there won't be any vacancy in the presidency in 2027. His statement was directed to the presidential candidate of the New Nigeria People's Party, Senator Musa Kwankwaso and his Kwankwasia group, reiterating the claim that the NNPP in Kano was behind his purported suspension as a member of the APC. The APC national chairman made the claim while receiving hundreds of his supporters and some support groups from Kano at the APC National Secretariat in Abuja. Arise analyst Dash Obali joins us now to discuss Ganduje's claim ahead of 2027 and the import for free and fair elections. Good afternoon, Mr. Shibwale. Welcome to Good Newsday. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be as usual. Even though this was directed to the Kwankwasia movement, yeah. is this the right time to be making such a statement? There is no timing in this issue. He's a politician and he's trying to bait and tease his opponents. Okay. Uh, on the surface of it, there is no way he can say there is no vacancy because the electoral laws are there. It was so old election. But it seems is you know, uh, how do I put it? is uh, jumping the gun mm -hmm. in electioneering vis-a-vis -vis 2027 is entitled to it. But then you must know this is a man under serious crossfire in Kano. See, I think next week a judge will start investigating what he did in office for eight years, almost 16 years, because he was deputy governor, then he was uh, a governor eight years. So, he is saying uh, those against him are mm. creating a diversion from their sour grapes that they lost the election. Grapes. That they lost election. But he too, in throwing this uh, political uh, ballistic into the field, is trying to divert attention from his coming woes, especially in Kano, because. The government has set up that body to investigate him. And he must, he must face the music. That is the law. So I think, I won't call him a clown. <laughs> clown. Yes, clown. It's so good to be a clown. <laughs> but you can see that he's trying to make light of the situation. He's trying to tease people. And those ones will react in kind. But when you look at the underground, there are serious issues that have gone on in Kano. Mm -hmm. especially with regard to that election. You remember uh, the court case? We had two, two uh, certified true copies. A judge at the Supreme Court, I think it was Justice Okoro, lamented that he gave victory to the two parties until that one. So you can know who is, who has real malice now. It's the Kano government, <laughs> the Nigeria <laughs> People's Party. They have real malice because they knew what happened and how difficult it was for them to get a legal victory at the Supreme Court. So if they have time, I say, making the mockery of their effort, I wish him the best of luck. Right. But he's not saying that there will be no election. He dare not say that. That will not be legitimate. So to me, it's electioneering, jests and jokes. So let's leave it like that for now. And, and to quote him, he called all of this African magic drama uh, that's happening in Kano State. But uh, when it comes to Kano State, he's now an opposition uh, party yes, member APC, yes. uh, for, for, as far as the state is concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when we look at the, the, the genesis of this and the fact that these people all belonged to one family before, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Shobwale, how do you analyze the power play that's happening here? Do you think Ganduje will, will be able to regain some sort of uh, political footing in Kano State, or shall I call regain structures, as uh, Nisam Wike likes to call it, or has he completely lost the structures? Well, he, like we rightly noted, is in the opposition in Kano, but he's not in the opposition in the center. He's the chairman of a major party. And even though it's what people try to embarrass him by eliminating him, the, the, the party central committee, you know, stuck by him, and say he's still the one there. So don't dismiss him lightly, eh, just as you will not take the threat of the Kano state government, you can't dismiss that either, because they are, they are on the ground 
terra farmer. They are the de facto the jury government. That unless he flees Kano and does not come back to Kano, if the court there makes uh, another about him and his freedom, it will be liable because the rule of law will come into play. So in a way, it is an unfolding. This is politics, opposition politics at its best. Some people have tried to imply that it's okay. The other time you said uh, the NMPP people should not live in isolation and come and enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> that was how it all the started. <laughs> Famous yes, last time. I remember at one time uh, somebody joined, I think the Obasanjo government, and somebody was on the position, his deputy government, for said, "Look, you are here now. We have come with, asked you to come and eat, not to cause trouble." Uh, See, that is, is our political methodology, sort of. And they are making some humor out of it. You cannot say, unless you want to be extremist, that you will call it a drift to all one party state. How can that be? No way. He's trying to make a mockery of his own predicament. I say on top of the show. But if he stays long enough in Kano, and the tribunal finds him guilty of one thing or the other, he will face the wrath of the law. It will no longer be a laughing matter. Mm. Uh, no more. Mr. Shabal, I know you said you didn't want to call him a clown and that this is something that's still unfolding. Yeah. Do you anticipate any reactions that might, you know, not rec have received that in the same spirit that you might have, you know, seen it as just, you know, yeah, but they are, you, know, you know, they have reacted to him, yes. but I'm not their spokesman. <laughs> because they have reacted to him in the same vein that he, he has called what they are doing to him a diversion. And you see, uh, uh, getting on their nerves by saying, mentioning sad graves, that is because they, they lost, mm -hmm. that they are still bitter. You know, that can be more painful than any other thing. So they are paying him back in his own coin. I think he understands it. But I miss all the politicking. You get me? And jokes, expensive jokes, they may be. You know, the rule of law is still at play. Huh. He was governor for eight years. They said they moved assets, they moved people, they moved property, and so on. And he's going to account for it. It's a court of law. And if you, you see, I don't think he has any bitterness because it's the, the party in power. Yeah. But the kind of people, the uh, New Nigeria party, People's Party, they know how hard it was for them to retain only Kano. So I'm sure they, they are trying to pay him back in his own coin for that joke about their loss of the election. And in the same breath, it almost seems like uh, this whole brouhaha and, and the way it seems like uh, Ganduje is being given a run for his money is a validation to NNPP and their strength. Uh, how would you perceive this, uh, this perception? Uh, NNPP owns Kano, literally, in spite of Ganduje, and he knows that. See, she mentioned the Kwa Kwa Sia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that. That's the movement. They're going strong. Kwa Kwa the movement, they are strong in Kano. And you see, you, you see, don't see what I'm trying to tell you. The bitterness is on the side of NMPP over the court case. Do you get my point now? So they are trying to get their pound of flesh back. And he is trying to make a mockery of that uh, indignation. Uh, I wish him luck <laughs> <laughs> in the court of law. Yes. So you think this is as far as this goes? Um, that we it don't is have an any... unfolding, you said it, it's an <laughs> unfolding drama. Ah, maybe the inquiry will come on. Yes. Eh? If, he's still, if he's still able to make this sort of joke mm -hmm. when the inquiry starts, then you will all be spectators to see what is happening. Mm. What is the political give and take? What is some undercurrent, some bitterness under it? That's politics. Mm? Uh, and, um, you know, in the past we've discussed how, and in the past we saw how, for example, Oshua Mele was removed from the ward level, how the end of the tenure of uh, APC chairman, for some reason, even PDP chairman, funny enough, traditionally begins from the ward. 
Do you think that he will be able to survive by aligning himself as closely to the center as we've seen him do? Yeah, but the center protecting him now. The center protecting him now because left with the world, he was gone. And I think they've even gone to court. Mm -hmm. uh, but you see, see the analogy with uh, Oshemele in Nedu. See, coincidentally, I read in the paper, uh, a trade union building was named after Oshemele <laughs> by, you know who? Inaugurated you know by Obaseki. <laughs> that's right. So that's politics now. Politics is a game of who gets what, when, and how. And once you win the presidential system, it's a winner takes all. So you are in control, but Angluje uh, is not in control in Kano. Uh, he's a national chairman. So most likely, it will be safer for him to stay in Abuja than Kano hmm. under the present circumstances until the old drama unfolds. Okay. Yes. Well, so we, we thank you for your analysis. As always, Mr. Dai Shibwale, a rising right. analyst, we appreciate you as always. Thank you. Thank you.